Hey, hello everybody. Hello LFS family. How are you? Uh, this is Carlos Jimenez, your uh, procurement vice president and uh, your product managers, Susana Montero, Andres Escobar and Alejandro Arboleda. This is our second procurement podcast for the company. Uh, we hope you enjoy it and uh, we want to bring you some news about the industry, each of our products and, and what's happening at every uh every product and the strategies of our managers uh what are they doing to face the challenges that this industry brings every day so hi guys how are you hi carlos how are you morning Carlos. Hey, how are you, morning, everybody? great great huh? so susana why don't we why don't we start with the ladies first Uh, well, Carlos, um, 2020 was a rough year for sure. Um, last year, we had many, many challenges um, and our department officially started on April. So it's going to be a year um, in two months. But I think uh, everyone can agree that we did measure up to the challenge. I don't know if guys, you guys could um, agree with me. I mean, for sure. Well, I do. <laughs> I do, and, and you're right. It's about to be a year now, so it's going to be our birthday now. In, I know. Uh, in a month. That's great. Yeah, let's get that out there just for presents. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, in LTL, uh, we increase our carrier network in 36%. Uh, we can see now in our carrier list that more and more clients are getting familiar to with Land Air, Pete Ohio, Sudan, and not only in LFS, but also in, in ECU tracking. Um, the pricing strategy increased our sales shipments about 5,000 pounds in 5%. And in the last queue, um, we mentioned that last time, but we'd hit record sales, um, never seen before. So that's something to celebrate. Um, and in 2021, we have a ambition plans, um, very ambitious. <laughs> before, you before you step into 2021, now I have, a, I have a, a question or two about 2020 on our LTL now. So when you said when you say uh, we increased our uh, carrier network on LTL on thirty six percent, that's only new carriers, right? That's not new. I mean, new lines of service no, or other mm -hmm. services that we have uh, uh, developed with the same carriers that we had before. Or are you putting all of that together on that thirty six percent increase on our? No, network? sir. I'm talking mainly um, only <laughs> uh, about new carriers, new contracts. Okay. new pricing agreements all of that is awesome. all new yeah and those are active carriers that lfs is using monthly right yeah um, something that we have been strong of is bringing carriers that uh, do feed our network not only to have them in a list but they move freight either in lfs or ecu trucking awesome yeah okay. Um, as everyone knows, 2021 is very ambitious, um, even more so that we're coming from um, a pandemic year. Uh, but I'm pretty confident that the strategies that we started uh, getting in motion this month are going to be um, very successful. And the company will be seeing new pricing strategies with our new um, rating engine, new vendors and new products. Um, I also have a big industry news. I don't know if you guys know, but TFI recently bought UPS. Um, probably read about it already. Yeah, everywhere. Uh, yeah, so TFI is a Canadian company and they bought UPS free for $800 million. So that makes TFI officially the largest LTL company in North America. So in the last two years, they um, started growing in the USA by buying um, mainly final mile um, companies and this so, year ho ho hold on a second so go ahead TFI, tfi a company that i mean we have not really been heard of now other than when, when we look into canada now it's mm -hmm. not it's not it's not our daily carrier right it's now the largest LTL provider in North America, even larger than FedEx, larger than HBO. Yes, I mean, sir. on the LTL. Okay. I mean, it looks like they were pretty smart about it. 
they start uh, buying small companies with last mile options and all throughout the USA. And then they make this big purchase of U UPS, which is, you know, that's a monster move for sure. Yeah. Um, so just by buying them, they went up to number one immediately. Wow. And I heard, uh, I read uh, I read something about TFI also buying a flatbed carrier uh, or, uh, for for not, not only flatbed now, but uh, I mean a special uh, heavy hauling carrier this this week, this past week now. Mm -hmm. Smaller, smaller, smaller purchase, but but it seems like these guys are, are out there now uh, buying companies. So and and looking forward to become a major player, or they they already are. So yeah, well, looks like they're spending more than LTL. UPS being our main LTL provider, what can we expect from this? Well, that's a pretty good question. Um, we know that TFI's strategy is completely uh, revenue oriented. So that will probably mean uh, we will see a significant, significant increase in our GRI. Um, that is just about a month away. Uh, but we are, we are working hard on preparing uh, for receiving the GRI. So oh, oh, hold on a second. I mean, we we already get an increase, right? Yeah. Are you saying we're gonna get another GRI? Uh, no, that's not what, I, what I'm what I'm saying. That probably the GRI that we are receiving is going to be pretty. Um, okay. uh, you know, you can complement the word. I don't want to say, <laughs> but uh, it's going to be substantial. Okay. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> so by. LFS getting an increase on its rates, we are not going to be hit by the GRI then, right? We're just getting an increase on our rates then, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Understood. Thank um, you. Um, yeah, but you know, uh, we have been anticipating and we have a, a strategy in place and uh, we're working on getting the data in order to get a pricing that is right for the increase. And to be honest, I'm not really alarmed by it. I'm pretty confident that what, what we're doing will work. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm being fair, you know, we we also have to say that we haven't received increases from UPS in the past two years. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, that pretty apart also. And well, that's pretty much it on my side. Um, I don't know if you have any other questions. Well, I mean, what can we expect from the LTO? I mean, on 2021, I see that, uh, I mean, you mentioned that it was a very challenging year, 2020, although it was pretty good for, for LFS as a company you now and, and the industry. I know the carriers are happy with their uh, revenues uh, increasing, but what can we expect on 2020, 2021? The network increase is going to be expected. Uh, we want to offer our clients a variety of, of vendors that they can cover anywhere to anywhere. So that is something that goes for sure. Um, we, are, or we are also expecting some new systems. So, you know, for LTL, which is one of the biggest products, uh, pricing plays like a big, big part of it. Um, so the strategy is going to be very strong with this new, uh, this new IT product. Um, so that is something that will be changing and will be, be getting stronger for sure. And we are also expecting to launch new products with combined rates and cross-border rates with LTL. So, um, yeah, big plans. Sounds, sounds small, but they're pretty challenging. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Sounds exciting. And, uh, yeah, and, and from the industry capacity wise now from our carriers, Mm, what do you think it's going to change or is it going to be the same? Well, right now there's some, there's a few carriers that are um, having some issues with capacity due to closing of terminals. You know, once a terminal, what when someone is infected with um, the one that should not be mentioned, <laughs> the terminal immediately closes for about two days. So that um, 
brings a capacity issue and they are taking measures but with all this vaccine going around uh, they'll probably get better by june um so hopefully uh, we can see something of improving from june to the end of the year yeah. that and all the all the new terminals and the new trucks coming coming up i mean on, on this q2 yeah I, i agree definitely i mean capacity should be better uh, should be improving mm-hmm. all right susanna thank you so much um, how are you everybody Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to talk about uh, an issue that is concerning the whole intermodal uh, uh, industry. I mean, uh, also dryage and rail. That is what's going on right now with the uh, uh, Long Beach port. Not only the congestion that everybody knows right now, uh, how difficult it is to cover cargo right now, how difficult it is to find availability for both of the products, but also what is going on right now with uh, all the vessels that are currently on a traffic jam they are waiting on the on the bay um, uh, approximately on an average of 40 uh, vessels waiting uh park on the ocean uh, on a daily basis waiting to get to get a spot on the ports on the terminals to get unloaded uh so this is uh creating a snowball and uh china uh, didn't stop the productivity with the new year so uh, we're expecting uh, long beach to keep that this space uh, at least for q2 why are, are they are they on hold there oh uh, yeah there's too much uh, containers coming in uh the, the the vessels are coming completely full so uh terminals doesn't have the capacity to unload the the all the vessels uh just as, as quickly as they want also uh there's a chassis shortage so the carriers that doesn't have the availability uh to uh outgate all the containers quickly enough for the terminal to uh, free out the space, uh, unload more containers and be able to empty one vessel and receive the other one. So uh, this is uh, just, again, going as a snowball uh, with more and more freight coming in. And a uh, huge company, huge uh, steamship lines such as Maersk and HMM are predicting that uh, this is gonna keep for at least Q2. Uh, so hopefully it, would, it, it won't get worse than this, but uh, Uh, what I was about to, to say is that the rail alert, alert that they have right now is that it's a COVID outbreak uh, uh, among the uh, port terminal uh, staff. So uh, they are uh, following with everybody that has been uh, infected, probably with everybody that has symptoms that have been in contact with uh, you know, infected people uh, to avoid something that is very unlikely to happen, but uh, to avoid uh, closing the port, the main U.S. port. But it's something that is everybody's keeping an eye on it right now because it could be a huge impact that, for the whole that, economy. That would be catastrophic. Yeah, I agree with you. How would you explain to the company the fact that Despite this situation in Long Beach, uh, in Los Angeles, uh, which is, I mean, it has been traditionally our main uh, port or point of action for the dryage uh, product. How can you explain to the company that you're kicking ass? I mean, the, the numbers in, in January and February are, are, are pretty good now for, for dryage. So how, how can you explain what's going on now? Definitely, uh, most most of what we're seeing right now in numbers, in uh, revenue, profit, uh, pickups is uh, related with the uh, import boom that uh, the whole U.S. is receiving, not only through Long Beach, but through Oakland, uh, Savannah, Charleston, New York, New Jersey. And we're doing great in all areas, even in Long Beach. Uh, we, we're not receiving the, 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 the biggest capacity from our carriers, uh, but I think we, we align pretty well ourselves with our customers and with the sales team. To advise the customers what the pre-notice, the lead time we need for each port of RAM. So we're seeing customers sending orders uh, related to that according to that times, and we're being able to react uh, properly to cover the, the shipments easily to keep the operation smooth. Uh, so definitely, um, we're doing a great job in both operations and carrier sales uh, to react to all that imports that we're receiving right now. Okay, and uh, I, I, I see that. I mean, this is this is a combined effort with the sales team too to 
I guess promote the, the I mean the service with the customers. It's helping now keep the balance in, uh, in place. Being, getting containers from other ports too, right? Definitely, definitely. They they have been very active uh, on the channel we have with them, requesting uh, or asking every uh, any doubt they have. And uh, we, we have been able lately, especially lately, like in uh, the last week, uh, to cover last minute shipments through the channel where the customer comes with a, with an urgency and the carrier sales team is doing a great job reacting to that and finding that the capacity to cover those shipments. So that's also helping uh, to have the numbers that we have right now. That is great. So let's hear about Intermodal now. Okay, Intermodal is, is going to be pretty quick. It's just uh, uh, right now with the uh, FTL uh, capacity crunch and high rates, is uh, looking good for Intermodal. Uh, they are growing year over year on uh, um, pickups and revenue uh, for all the Intermodal carriers that we use right now, CSX, UP, Norfolk Southern. So it's a great uh, opportunity that we have. We still have a long way to go with this product. But uh, just to keep in mind that uh, at least for the near future, it's a great opportunity for a customer to take advantage of and uh, to yeah save, do some savings and uh, be able to uh, handle the cargo properly and uh, in a pretty safety, uh, pretty safe uh, transport mode. What do you expect with the upcoming technologies, especially our new front end now to happen with your model? Right now, we're working uh, pretty uh, pretty hard with uh, marketing. We're trying to uh, improve our landing page, making more uh, more visually uh, appealing for the customers. Uh, also, with sales, uh, we're starting uh, 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 like a strategy with the SSS team that is the the main uh, where we receive the main FTL quotes to try to to bring more into more achievements. But definitely, uh, once we get the front end. That's going to be like a, a startup for Intermodal because it won't take too much time for the sales or for the customer to get both rates, both FTL and Intermodal, yeah. to compare them and to make the decision based based on their needs. So do you agree with me when, when, I, when I say uh, that the reason we don't sell more Intermodal is because it's not out there for our customers, it's not visible for them, they can't see and compare now transit time and the, the, the amount of impressive savings that they could they could uh, actually take advantage of. Uh, is that problem hopefully going to be solved with the new front end? Yeah, definitely. We, we just finished a training with the sales team where we uh, taught them how to quote with, uh, with each one of the intermodal uh, carriers. So they can try to uh, get the offer to the customer, compare it with the FDL, but uh, yeah, what you said is, is, is right. It's what we're seeing right now is just a uh, uh, lack of knowledge from our customers. That's great. That's great. I think, uh, I think we can have great expectations on our intermodal product. And definitely uh, on the second semester, we might see some, some very interesting numbers that we, we're going to have to consider for the forecast of 2022 for, for sure. Twenty twenty, uh, we just run the numbers again, trying to see exactly what happened on twenty twenty with all the revenue, profit, and share. And we have to say that uh, we're gonna focus on um, the main ten ports, not the main uh, in ten, po ten ports in U.S. by importance, but uh, what we move right now, uh, we're seeing that seventy five percent of the revenue is distributed in, among ten ports. Same for profit, same for pick for pickups. So. Uh, what we're going to do is exactly uh, attack those ports, know our capabilities, know our weaknesses and, uh, and try to cover those weaknesses so we can keep uh, improving on this product uh, as long as we uh, know exactly what we're doing which is with each one of the ports. And uh, that brings me to uh, 2021. That's where uh, what we're working right now is to uh, update or improve our carriage directory. So we can know exactly what our capacity is in each one of the ports and ramps, uh, what are our weaknesses. So we can try to, if we need to bring more carriers uh, on board to cover those needs, we will. But definitely what we're seeing right now, what uh, as our customer has a lack of knowledge on the intermodal, we have a lack of knowledge in what our carriers uh, can, can do. 
I mean, I agree with uh, that. Scratch, Steve Dorin, uh, Transloading Services, everything that we can do to offer not only new products or new services to our customer, but to improve the dry edge and keep a good relationship with our carriers uh, in all uh, the services that they offer. So that's uh, pretty much what we're doing in the first quarter of uh, 2021 and what we expect to uh, push us to complete uh, or to meet all the uh, the budget or the, the goals that we have for 2021. All right. Alejandro. And uh, finally, sorry, no, 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 go, you. go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, the other thing I want to mention for 2021 is uh, uh, once we have all this uh, knowledge about our carriers, we're going to uh, deliver to the co to the company, especially to the sales team, uh, Power BI that will uh, align these capacities uh, with uh, with our margins, with our effectiveness, and will give the, the sales team um, the tools to make decisions on a daily basis, on a quarter basis, uh, year round, so they can make decisions on where to sell, uh, where can I uh, provide discounts, uh, where should we be looking at for new shipments, and uh, yeah, that would be all. That is awesome. So uh, again, when when can the sales team expect this to be ready? Uh, right now, uh, to be honest, we're going a little behind uh, with all what's going on with the IT team on uh, on Swanly. We know it's the priority right now. Uh, we expect. Uh, to have this for Q2 for the sales team. Okay. Initially, it was in, like the start of Q2, April, but right now we're looking more like uh, like May, hopefully May. All right. Okay, well, yeah, I think that's going to be very useful too. Uh, Alejandro, thank you so much. Thanks for, for this news you know, and all, you all big plans also, I mean, uh, on both products. So that's that's great. And, 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 and thank you. Uh, I want to say, I mean, thanks to your team too, uh, guys have been doing a great job and the sales team promoting your products now absolutely absolutely helping all right let's have this guy he he, he wanted to talk since the beginning so andres <laughs> we're all ears how are you carlos no well first of all uh, i just want to concur with the guys 2020 was very challenging uh we expect to have 2021 very different than 2020. Uh, the pandemic resulted uh, uh, as a crash in demand and followed uh, by a capacity crunch uh, that affected us in different ways and uh, is making comparisons pretty difficult. But, but as Susie said, well, this is the first year uh, of procurement as an official department. Uh, so we're planning to bring as much value as we can. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about the product itself. Uh, FTL grew 78.7 in revenue compared to 2019, which is an enormous uh, growth. Uh, on pickups, uh, we grew 54%, uh, which is a really good number as well. But uh, this, this is making us 2021 uh, to be more than challenging uh, because we're expecting a 176% growth uh, based on the sales what? forecast. So as uh, is going from 78 between 2019 to 2020 to 176. So there's a bunch of things we need to do to make that happen. So uh, that's ambitious. Yeah. Now, is that including Kansas? Correct. Too? Correct. That's uh, the, all the product, uh, Kansas and Miami office. So um, all right. This will make uh, to have the product increase their share of the of the company sales uh, from 36% in 2020 to 68% in 2021. So uh, if we want to make this happen, we need to have a cohesive work between all the company areas. So I'm um, including sales, marketing, uh, IT department, secure sales, operations. So if we need to make this happen, we need to work together to to accomplish this uh, i i agree i mean i and i think that i mean everybody who i mean listens to this you now agrees that uh it has to be a combined effort or teamwork to get there you know but can you be more specific on i mean the strategies that you that you're following to grow i mean 176 percent the FTL product i mean that that's that's super super ambitious. yeah for sure well as for now from from procurement department uh, we're working on several it tools uh which will help us to control our margins so we can be more effective uh with our quoting 
Uh, we're also working in some carrier development strategies so we can have a better rate from our carriers so we can be more competitive as well. We're trying to boost uh, new services such as the cross-border, uh, the hotshot services in Mexico as well. Um, and we're also giving, uh, well, creating a, a, a new tool that can help us uh, the sell team to have some leads on the Mexican market. So it's, it's something we're focusing at the moment uh, to make this happen. Uh, but the first thing, well, our main product uh, or, or service is, is the driving one. So uh, we want to develop uh, that service, uh, get a better knowledge, where the product seasons are, uh, what we need to do to beat the market, what we need to do to beat the carrier contract rates. So uh, if we do that, uh, for sure, we're gonna be close to that 117% growth. Um, on the other hand, I wanna talk uh, about 2020 itself, uh, uh, Brentag Pacific. Uh, well, Brentag is uh, distributed in different uh, rocks or customers. Uh, what's the main customers for us? Uh, talking about revenue uh, and in number of shipments was Reef, uh, which is that customer we work uh, with the towing services. Uh, the most profitable carrier was Orange Courier, who's in charge of, uh, of some transfer we have in the West Coast. But the carrier we used the most was Ivory Trucking, who is in charge of the California services for Reef with uh, almost 800 pickups last year, which is, uh, is, is a good number. Uh, and hopefully is increasing this year as well. That, that is that is great. Now, so what can we expect from new services now? I mean, you mentioned that Drive-In uh, is the number one product for, uh, I mean, line of service for the company. Uh, and uh, and also, I mean, the towing, towing services now, uh, we're gonna keep growing there uh, through this customer and hopefully other customers, not only not only Reef, but what about flatbeds? What about open deck uh, uh, trucks and 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 other territories like Canada and now other parts of Mexico? I mean, what what can we expect? Well, there? That, that that's a good point you you brought there, Carlos. Uh, the flatbed uh, was really affected in 2020 because with the pandemic, uh, well, this COVID situation, uh, all the construction uh, area was really constrained and then they stopped a bunch of uh, new construction uh, projects. Uh, but this 2021 is uh, at least, well, January and February is having like a enormous, enormous, enormous share on what the market seeing right now. Uh, so if, if we focus over there on those uh, platforms, as you said, not only flatbed, uh, so step the global is RTNs. Uh, we can have good opportunities as well. The, it's important to mention that on flatbed, the, the, the average ticket is, is, is a bit higher than the drive. And so this is, uh, it will help to get a, a revenue uh, uh, goal accomplished easier. Okay. Also, also, also right. with the Canada one, uh, we're working with the Kansas City office. Uh, uh, we have like a, a couple of projects uh, on, on, well, uh, we're looking into them. So maybe we can start uh, growing the, 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 the FTL service over there. Uh, also, uh, I wanted to mention uh, that in 2020, there were, uh, well, the top 10 markets in 2020 uh, if we check the top, if we check the top ten markets in 2020 between drive and reef and flatbed, uh, Atlanta is on top of the three services, and same as Dallas and Houston. So, uh, if if maybe we can do something with sales to focus on those specific areas, uh, we can get more volume for sure. Uh, it was more than 126 billion in the annual shipments uh, on those specific markets. So uh, it's, it's important to take a look at that. Mm, that's something definitely you need to address to Felipe and the sales team. Um, correct, correct. And look for opportunities there. Yeah, well, and yeah, that's mostly it. Uh, That is great. I have uh, just one last question now, because I've seen that Alejandro has big expectations on Indra model now. And the way I see it with the upcoming uh, front end, 
uh, for our customers and our new systems now you're gonna have a, a big competitor in the company now especially for that spot spot rates now and uh, that that come from all our uh, forwarder customers so have you considered that when you when you say that uh, you expect i mean the company expects the product to grow 176 percent well yeah i have considered that but it's also well it's two different strategies well the customers that go for the intermodal they have a uh, different lead times uh, uh and they can control their their shipping and receiving easier than that well at the moment, we have a bunch of customers that we haven't exploded and we, we, we need to explore them and, and get more volume from them that they need uh, the FTL, FTL service itself. Uh, for example, yesterday we were checking some some projects of a customer that he doesn't want an intermodal because they're like always hot orders. So maybe that's something we need to focus on to, to make this happen. Well, and I'm, I'm, I'm not worried. Well, uh, if intermodal grows, that's, that's good for the company. Uh, and then uh, uh, what the idea or the strategy we want to do in FTL is like is, is get better rates. Well, is, is offer different options to the customer, uh, so the uh, customer can yeah compare and choose whatever he wants. So uh, the idea is to grow That's together. Right. That's right. It's better to have uh, as much options as possible in this yeah. case. Now. Andres, thank you so much. Thanks for all this information. Now and thank you, thank you guys.